What's up guys, David Turek here, and today I'm going to be doing a Sweets Kendama's Homegrown Review. So first thing to note is that there is a large variety of homegrowns. First there is the Mint Berry Crunch Spectra, which is $90. There's the Birch Beta Homegrown, which comes in at $50. There's a Maple Homegrown with a Walnut Stripe that comes in at $65. There's the Maple Homegrown with a Paddock Stripe, which comes in at $70. There's the Maple Homegrown with a Purple Heart Stripe that comes in at $75. And there's also many other Homegrown Kendamas. So the second thing I'd like to say about these Kendamas is that they are super tacky. Even if they're a natural kendama, they still somehow have some sort of stick that is really easy to do lighthouses, lunars, and other balance tricks. Now the Birch Beta Homegrown isn't a natural, but it is still super tacky, and I can still lace a lot of tricks on it, even though it's not a natty. Another thing I'd like to note is the hole on the tama. It seems to be a bit bigger than other kendamas, and I'm not sure if they did that on purpose, but it really seems to help when you're trying to land super hard spike tricks. And yeah, the hole's just a lot bigger, it seems like, and it really helps with those difficult spike tricks. The next part of this kendama is the cups. Um, I feel like the cups are bigger than most kendamas because when I had like a beginner using it, he seemed to catch it on big cup a lot more, and I feel like I can catch it on cups easier too. So I think they might be a little bit deeper as well as a little bit bigger in diameter. So. Yeah, I think that's something to note about this kendama. One thing I really liked about this kendama when I got it was the spike. The spike isn't too long, but it's not too short either. So it makes it really easy for stilt flips or any just stall like that for birds and stuff like that. So yeah, the spike isn't too short, but it's not too long either. So it makes it really easy to do those kinds of tricks. Another thing I like to say is that it's very easy to do handle stall in rings, um, mainly because it's uh, the ring is a bit more like deep. It's kind of more like a sharper turn. Um, so yeah, it's easier to catch it on ring and makes those types of tricks easier as well. Um, lunar and lighthouse balance are pretty much amazing because lunar balance, even though it's a natural kendama, is amazing. I can lace lunar tricks. I can lace good lighthouse tricks. I can practically lace anything I want on this if I really put in the time. And yeah, that just makes it a really good kendama because the spike isn't too short or too long, like I said, it's for a good lunar balance. Now, one of the last things I like to talk about is the durability. And I could probably talk about the durability for a long time, but just to wrap it up, I did a lot of yanks yesterday. And I thought he was gonna dent a lot more in the Tama, but it actually held up really well. Um, so yeah, the durability is amazing. The Ken stays in good shape and Honestly, I find homegrowns better once you break them in. Because once you break them in, it seems like you, you can play them a little bit better. But the durability is still super amazing. Spike stays pretty sharp for a while. And then, um, yeah, it's just really a durable kendama and it's really easy to play. It's very playable and durable. Now, one last thing before we get on to final results is the looks. I really love the looks of these kendamas. The seal on them looks amazing. Um, the little homegrown symbol at the bottom, um, especially with the spectras, the wood just looks amazing. The wood is really high quality, it looks high quality as well, and all of the homegrowns in my opinion look amazing. So yeah, I really like the looks on these kanamas, um, they just look really nice, I really like natural kanamas, so they definitely fit my style. So now let's get on to the final results of this homegrown kendama. For tack, I would have to give this kendama a 9, mainly because right out of the box, a natural kendama shouldn't be able to stick like a homegrown does, but a homegrown somehow does it. So yeah, I'd give it a 9, but I wouldn't give it a 10 because it doesn't, I don't think it deserves a 10, uh, mainly because after it gets, after you break it in, it kind of loses the tack a little bit, but it still is really tacky for a natural kendama, so I'll give uh, the tack a 9. So the next section is playability for this kanama. So for playability, I would have to give this kanama a 10 because it seems like I can just do anything. Like I literally 
landed a triple tap first try, which is not like me. Um, that was my first ever one, and I took it out of the box and I did a triple tap first try. So it just seems like you can land anything. Um, it's really playable and it's overall just really good. For durability, I would give this Kendama a 9, mainly because, like I said, I did like 100 yanks yesterday. Didn't dent up that much. Um, it seems to be really durable. The Ken holds up really well, as long as well as with the Tama. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a 9 for durability. So overall for this Kendama, I would give it a 9, mainly because if I gave it a 10, it would have to be a little bit more tacky in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's really good Kendama. Definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, homegrowns are pretty. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this review. Homegrowns are really good Kendamas. Um, I'll put a link down to Sweets Kendamas below so you can go buy one. I definitely recommend picking one up. So yeah, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.